What's up guys, Joe at Driven Films here, and today I'm kicking off my brand new series, How to Film Cars Like a Pro. In this first episode, I'm doing a video editing breakdown for a spec ad I shot for the Cadillac CTSV. Now don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the follow-up videos on color grading and sound design. With that being said, let's check out this Cadillac. guys I'm here in DaVinci Resolve and before we go any further I do want to state that the techniques and principles that I'm about to teach you guys in this breakdown can apply to any editing software whether it's Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, Resolve, Avid Media Composer or even something like Sony Vegas. So this is more of a workflow breakdown more so than a tutorial and just to show you exactly how I put this together and just sort of how I work through a project from start to finish. Now, seeing as this is edited from start to finish already, you're not going to see me edit the entire piece over from scratch, but I will break down what I did and explain sort of how I shot and how I pulled off each shot and just kind of the thought process behind why I did what I did. Okay, so now we're on the edit page and I'm just going to give it a quick run through and talk about each scene shot by shot in a way. So you'll see here that I got Steve walking to his car, some nice B-roll of the car, nice slow movement. And then he grabs the door handle, gets in the car and starts it and then boom, puts it in drive. So this first scene, my thought process behind this was that I wanted to get a nice establishing shot of Steve walking to his car. And then I wanted to let the viewer kind of just think what's going on. Like, you know, this is a nice car. He's walking to it. What's it all about? You know, we see it's nice, clean lines. We see the nice in curve wheels, beautiful wheels. And we also have some leading lines with this shot. So my thought behind this was I'm establishing a location. So you see here, I have some nice leading lines right to the wheel, trying to draw attention to the wheel, but also give some nice attention to the background. So the next shot here, basically from same scene, just the other side of the car is this nice trees, sun coming through in the background and then cut right back to another angle, same angle as this shot, but just from the front of the car. Moving on to the next shot was Steve grabbing the door handle. So instead of just continuing this shot on to here, which is all one continuous shot, as you can see here, let me just pull this open. And this way you can see exactly what's going on. This is one continuous shot of Steve getting in the car. And this was a handheld actually. So I just tried to stay steady. So he gets in the car, boom. Then I cut to a wider shot or a medium shot of him getting in just to kind of break it up. So it wasn't just like, you know, one full take where there was some camera shake in between. And also I didn't want him to just block the camera with his shorts. So I cut to that, then boom, closing the door. Cut immediately to him inside the car, pressing the start button. And I missed the days when cars had keys, something about like the keys jangling and putting the key in the ignition. Something about that was, uh, was always nice. So I can't wait to film a classic car. Then I cut to the instrument cluster. This was a very difficult shot to pull off, but basically this instrument cluster loads and then it goes in phases. And I didn't really like that. So like, boom, it loads, 
loads up like a digital gauge and then switches to something else. So it went through like three different versions before it landed on what's, I guess, considered the sport mode. So I decided to just simply cut this shot and just, you know, cut it right here and then cut straight to exhaust. Now, once you guys hear the sound design and all of this, like I think it's all gonna come together and I'm gonna explain why I did what I did. So you have your startup sequence, click, load, boom. So it's just very simple, click, load, boom. And then right into gear, that's the start. That's where he gets on the road. So now that we see this sequence here of the startup, Steve getting in a car, starting it up, and pretty much getting ready to go. I wanna show you guys just a couple little things that I did to accentuate this sequence here. But So let's play it back real quick. Boom, getting in, start, load, launch, boom. So what can we do to accentuate this and make it look a little bit more interesting and just overall more exciting? And what I did here was I did a subtle zoom into this shot. Now you can see here, keyframe your zooms you'll see here right here zoom in your inspector palette i just did a very soft subtle push in and i didn't do that in camera i was holding this as steady as i could while in the car with steve and then just did a nice push in and i believe i did the same thing not for that one but the next shot here what i did is and i have to enable color grading or at least uh dis you know disable the bypass but you'll see here what I did is I added a rumble to or a camera shake just so that when the exhaust starts and let's turn that on actually, let's turn the music track off. Boom. You hear there's a rev. So we have a nice camera shake and the way you do that is within the color panel. It's actually an effect and it's the last thing I did. It was just a nice shake and you do that by just searching for your effects. I'm not gonna show you guys exactly how to do the camera shake. I'm just doing this as a breakdown. But what I would say is if you are going to add some sort of interest to a shot like this, where it's, there's an impact, you know, there's like a hard rumble of the exhaust, like add a camera shake and just see what you can do there and um, see if it adds some interest to your shot. One tip I have is don't go overboard with a shake. And what's great is you could actually keyframe that camera shake. So next up, we move on to putting the shifter. I did consider adding a camera shake to this as well, just kind of like a thud. But when I tried it out, it just looked kind of tacky. So I just feel like it came out pretty nice, just as it is. So after he starts the car up, we move on to the next sequence. And that is the driving shots. So you see here, we have a nice shot running through the trees, with the sun popping through, boom, drops down, reveals the car. And it's the first time you see the car on the road. What I love about this shot in particular is that it's showing off the car itself and it's not a very distracting background, but it is a very interesting background. And it pretty much has some great contrast between the luxury car and nature itself. And I think the only thing that I'd like better about this shot in general would be that if we were able to basically just drive in the center of the road and just have really nice symmetry, but unfortunately we couldn't do that. But overall, I think this shot came out pretty nice and I'm very happy with it. I think the dynamic range on the Z cam is really showed off in this shot in particular. I was able to push it pretty far as you guys can see here in the log shot. So next up, I cut immediately to a close up of the car just with the trees zipping by. And I just love the fact that I'm seeing the trees just zooming by off the reflection. And just the whole car is just really, really shiny and just overall really, really glossy paint job. So I thought that looked really good. And it just kind of tied together with the following or the previous shot where you see the trees just zipping by off the windshield. And then next up, cut to a close up of the front of the car. Now I did crop this just a little bit. So then we move on to this next shot, close up of the front of the car. I feel like this conveys the speed really nicely and we weren't going that fast. I wanna say we may have been going about 60 miles an hour, but I wanted to give it a sense of feeling that we were moving pretty quickly. And I feel that 
the shutter speed that I had it set at was, I believe, 96 degrees, believe it or not. When I filmed this, I wanted to just convey a sense of speed without going too fast, and I think I got it there. Now, I did add some camera shake to this shot just to see how it would look, and I showed you guys that we do the camera shake in the color palette, so I'm just going to disable the color grading here, so that'll disable all the effects. So you see here, it's a pretty stable shot with the car rig and the Mobi Pro, but once we add some camera shake, it's very subtle, nothing too extreme. It does add a little bit more, you know, excitement and action to the shot. Now the following shot here, I just cut straight to the back of the car rather than just going to the middle. I kind of, you know, mixed it up a little bit. I didn't go front, middle, back. I felt that, again, the decision I made to tie these two shots together allowed me to tie these two together without, you know, worrying too much about continuity. I just felt that these shots worked better together and these shots work better together. Then next up, I cut to another side profile, not as close as the previous side shot. And then I cut straight into him stomping the gas pedal. Now, the way I pulled off this gas pedal shot is I did a camera shake and a quick zoom. Now I'm gonna just zoom into this timeline here. Now the zoom I did is more of a snap zoom. And you'll see here, in fact, let me just turn off camera shake. Boom, just very fast. This is a very quick zoom. In fact, I think it could have been a little bit quicker, but I feel that the camera shake accentuated that. And the camera shake was very, very subtle, nothing too intense. So the following shot, I took the slight zoom here. I took that momentum and punched into the speedometer. Now the speedometer, I did also keyframe everything. I keyframed the position, the scale, the zoom, and also the rotation. So I'm going to duplicate this shot and show you exactly what it looks like without any sort of like whatsoever, just, but basically that is this shot right here. It's just, that's it. I'm going to show you guys a little something that I cheated on. So the way I filmed this was I just stood outside the car, zoomed in on this, you know, tachometer and had Steve rev the car. So this is to simulate, you know, that he's hit the gas. So unfortunately, because we weren't moving, there was no speed whatsoever. So. You'll see here, no speed whatsoever. So what I did is I used the patch replacer in the color panel, which I believe is a studio version only. And I just cheated and I know it doesn't look the best, but honestly, there was no other solution to get this shot from this angle while driving based on what I had with me at the time. So as you can see, we do a punch in, a rotation, as well as a little bit of position. And you can see that here in the inspector and then boom, snap right to a shot of the Cadillac oncoming. Now to give this more of a um, smooth motion, what I did was I did a speed ramp. I sped it up very gently. I let it stay at, I believe this was 110% speed right here. And I just ramped it up right here and nothing too crazy because it did go by about 60 miles an hour, but I wanted it to feel like it was coming by like, you know, 90, a hundred, and then right into the next shot, right into the next sequence. So that's the overall breakdown of the first set of shots. And then we'll move into the very next scene. So my thought process behind this underpass sequence was that, you know, he's taking a break, he's, you know, dogged on the car a little bit and he's just, you know, parking it for a second. And I wanted to take advantage of kind of this like calm down, like, you know, brake sequence to really show off some beautiful aspects of the car. For instance, the in-curve wheels. I think these wheels look beautiful and I wanted to pay special attention to them. And he also has these custom painted Brembo calipers and I wanted to really just show them off. So I gave quite a bit of attention to the wheels and the brakes. So the way I pulled off this shot was I just did a skyfall gimbal movement and that's simply aiming the gimbal at the sky and then pulling down and back as I'm moving it just creates a little bit of movement to the shot and just overall reveals the car which I think is great and I continued that movement onto the next shot now what I like about this shot here this these two shots together is you have this negative space under the overpass with the bird houses now if these bird houses weren't there I don't think I would have used a shot because I would have felt that it took away from the car too much, the, you know, nice negative space here. 
I feel that these leading lines on the underpass drive the viewer's eye across the frame, but also these birdhouses, you know, one, two, three, just push right into the car and it kind of creates like a little bit of a wave. So I wanted to continue that movement onto the next shot. And I chose this shot of the wheel mainly because of this negative space here to the left, which I feel matched up to the first shot in this scene. So again, I just did a really simple, clean skyfall. I wouldn't call this a skyfall, but I just did a simple pan down and then straight into the next shot, which was just a truck across the wheel. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are shooting cars is that you want the center cap to either face straight or not upside down. Now, this is at a little bit of a curve, in curve, get it? But uh, this is at a little bit of a curve or an angle, and I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me too much. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it is a little bit of attention to detail, and you could fix that in post if you really want to. It would just take a little bit of work, and it is doable, but just keep that in mind when you're shooting. Then I move on to the next shot, and what I did here, you may notice, in fact, I'm going to play this through. You may notice a little bit of a vertigo effect, and I wanted to keep it very subtle, and the way I pulled this off was when I shot this, I simply was walking towards the car. In fact, I'm going to show you the actual shot. So see here, I was walking towards the car with the gimbal. And I was moving fairly quickly. So you see here, moving towards the car. And what I did is I actually reversed it as if I was pulling out. And then I keyframed my zoom. So watch the zoom here. So I'm in fact pushing in, but zooming out at the same time. And that creates this effect. This is good old Alfred Hitchcock vertigo effect. I don't like overusing little tricks like that. I just like to keep it subtle and just, um, you know, not too distracting. So overall, I like the way that looks. And I felt that it showcased the car really nicely, this shot in particular. And then I cut straight to a rear shot just to show off the carbon fiber spoiler and just carbon fiber accents of the car. And again, it just has some nice leading lines, just boom, straight into the CTS. You see this line right here of the overpass it almost lines up perfectly if you were to continue it with the CTS. So moving on to the next shot, we cut to the front end of the car. This wasn't exactly my favorite shot, but it was my favorite shot of the front end from the sequence. And I wanted to just showcase his custom emblems here. And I love the grill on this car, just beautiful. And I just tried to continue that camera movement overall, just as if I was punched in this was like the zoom of this so now this sequence right here could have gone either way i could have gone from a close-up to a medium straight to another close-up but i felt that these two shots tied nicely together it didn't distract the eye too much so i'll play these through i felt it was a pretty clean cut and then move into the next shot now i wasn't too sure how to pull this off i'll admit i wasn't too sure like how to segue from this shot into that. So what I wanted to do is just make it really rapid and sudden. Like the car is cooled down, it's it's done, it's like, you know, it's had its rest and then it's back to work. So what I did is just a rapid, just really hard cut, boom, as the car zooms by. So I made use of the camera shake here and what I did is I only keyframed and I only applied left and right camera shake. So it's basically just left and right, boom, as it zooms by. And that's it. And then straight into the next shot, which was actually more of a happy accident. I don't think I meant to pull this shot off, but I had the gimbal aimed up on the car rig and then I just dropped it down. I, I don't recall doing this on purpose, but I felt like it ended up looking pretty good and just kind of worked out. Then onto the next shot. I like that this was more of a reverse of this shot. Boom really simple and clean. So then I cut to my next shot in this train tracks canopy of trees here, which is what I consider the way I would transition from, you know, where it's daytime, it's starting to get, you know, cloudy out. And we had some like rapidly changing weather conditions here. So it got dark very, very fast. And I want to say these were shot at about five o'clock, maybe a little bit after five. 
so we were fighting the light immensely. I didn't get the golden hour. I didn't really get those beautiful clouds. Unfortunately, what I was able to do was just utilize this shot right here and use that as just kind of a way to go from you know light to dark. That's unfortunately what I had to work with and that's just how I pulled it off. Just use that to segue into this. So I pulled off that drop again aimed at the sky and just revealed the car. Now I didn't have too much of this shot to work with. In fact, I really almost didn't use this shot seeing as it was not tack sharp. And the reason why I let myself get away with it was because the car was so far away. So normally you want the car to be in focus. You want it to be sharp. And unfortunately in this shot, I didn't pull it off. I didn't get it right. So I quickly transitioned into this shot. Now I want to turn this off real quick because I want to show you guys just kind of like how this is raw. Then I had him approach. I said, Steve, we're on the walkie talkies. I had him pull up on us and he is really close to the car here because I was shooting pretty wide. So I want to say I was shooting at about uh, 18 millimeters on the Sigma 18 or 35. So I was like, Steve, you got to pull up really close to us. He was maybe a foot away from the camera here. So just let him run through it. A nice sequence of shots, the front of the car, kind of replicating what we had earlier in the video. Day to night, very similar shots. Not identical, obviously, but overall giving it a nice feel. This shot in particular, I absolutely love. Most people or some people may not like the Dutch angle, but I feel that this shot in particular is probably one of my favorite shots of the entire video and the reason being is it conveys speed it looks as if this car is cutting through the road it's just beautiful shot and it's really showing off the lines of the car overall the only thing that i would have liked to have seen more with this is if i would have shot a little bit wider or maybe had a little bit more in front of the car a little more road in front i think that is the only thing i would have liked you know to improve on this shot, possibly to expose the, for the wheel a little bit better. But in this case, I decided that I didn't want to lose my highlights. So I exposed for that in particular. We've shown the wheels. I just want to you know, make sure that the rest of the shot isn't blown out. So unfortunately I had to sacrifice the wheels here. And then onto this shot, I did something in particular because this shot was filmed and we were not going too fast here. I want to say maybe 40 miles an hour and it didn't look fast. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did here. I actually added motion blur. In fact, let me just close this and you'll be able to see it right here in the trees. Now, DaVinci Resolve has some really nice tools for noise reduction and motion blur. And unfortunately, this is in the paid studio version, but you'll see here that there is a motion blur section in the motion effects, which is where temporal noise and spatial noise reduction are. So you'll see here, I just added another node and it didn't blur the car and you'll see it just adds some nice noise like you know motion blur to the shot and it is pretty processor intensive but let me go back to that shot and just loop it so you'll see it just adds some nice motion blur to the shot whereas if we turn it off you'll see there's almost no motion blur and what's great about it is it does blur the car just a little bit but not enough for it to really, really, really show in the shot, especially considering it's a really, really quick shot. So I'm gonna turn, move to the next shot. Same thing, just some nice sexiness of the car. And then the way I ended the video was with my signature flyby in two directions. So he approaches, boom, boom. Coming at us, boom, out of the camera shake. And that camera shake was just hard, very, very quick. No zoom whatsoever, did not stabilize in post at all and just let it ride out and ended. So I want to run through a couple little additional things that I did. And this is something I like to do every now and then. And I use it tastefully. I try to use these effects only when it really makes sense. And I've done a video on this in the past. You could check that out. 
It's a video on light leaks and how to add some impact to your videos. I'm going to put a link up here in the cards so you can check that out. But what I did is I added these light overlays from lens distortions. And these are great. This is actually from classic light hits. Let's see these light hits. These are amazing. These are something you could purchase from lens distortions. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below, but these just add a subtle, subtle effect. You'll see here in the top right, I just flipped it. It's as if, you know, you're zooming in and it's like your lens just catches a little bit of light. Same thing with this shot here. It just adds a little bit, you know, sexier look. Nothing too crazy, nothing too over the top. And then same thing right here. And then I also added another one. This is from Classic Light Hits. This is a subtle light hit. And you'll see here, this to me made the most sense. Like this is if, as if, you know, your lens is catching the sun here. So to me, like this makes a lot of sense to have some sexy, sexy flares. And I continued those flares onto the next shot to just tie these two together. And they're just, you know, super subtle. There's nothing too extreme about these. And I did the exact same thing on this shot. And the reason I did it on this shot is because you see the light, right? Just passing over the car. So I tried to simulate like what it would look like if the lens is getting some glare as it like, you know, as the trees reveal the sun. So I just let it flicker and then off. And then I only used that effect once more. And that was on this shot. And this is from the Maven pack. And this is the actual lower version right here. Another very simple and clean effect, but I flipped it and used it to create like a nice, just nice look as if right there, you see like the headlights are coming at you. And I did consider, I'll show you guys here. I did consider adding lens flares to the actual car you see here. But I felt that this wasn't true to what I was shooting. I wasn't shooting with an anamorphic lens. This was on a Sigma 18 to 35. And I just didn't feel that this added anything to the video. I did experiment with it and I do recommend that you guys experiment and just see what you can come up with. And this may work for you and it, you know, may not but I added another one. I simply just tracked it. And that's one thing that I love about DaVinci Resolve is its tracking abilities. But you see here, this is a dynamic effect. So let me just turn off the sound, sorry. <laughs> but to see here, it's a you know, dynamic effect and it will track. So you see that this little flare here will, you know, follow your tracking. So it just didn't work out. I thought it would look good. Um, it was to me realistic enough but i just didn't feel it added enough you know to the shot to make it worthwhile so that's pretty much it we have a short sexy impactful high intensity yet you know elegant enough video to show off this car and pretty much make a statement all right guys that wraps it up for the video editing breakdown for this Cadillac CTSV ad. If you learned something from this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you have any questions about what happened in this video and what I did, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to get to your question as soon as possible. Also, I'd like to invite you to join the Driven Films Discord channel. You can find a link to the Discord channel in the description below. Now, most of all, please hit that subscribe button tap the bell icon next to it so you don't miss out on the color grading and sound design segments of this breakdown. Until next time, take care. Now be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out up on... Now be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out up.